and thanks for tuning in to the episode of Form Scan on irishracing.com. Delighted to be joined this weekend by Stephen Harris. There's some really exciting action, I suppose, mainly in the UK with a big meeting at Kempton on Saturday. And we're going to have a little anti post chat as well towards the end. But Stephen, how are you keeping? Yeah, fine. Thanks, Emma. It's, uh, it's actually stopped raining for about the first time in three weeks. And I'm just down the road from Kempton about five minutes away. So uh, perhaps things won't be quite as bad there as, as it looked like being early in the week. I, I think it got to nearly heavy a couple of days ago and maybe nearer to soft and maybe drying out on Saturday. So it won't be quite as bad as some of the trainers seem to think. Yeah, we're kind of getting to that little awkward stage of the season as well. Like There's still good racing in Kempton, but I'd imagine a lot of these horses probably won't head to the festival no matter what kind of a performance goes in. Well, some of them might maybe, but... Still, still good action in Kempton though, and about three weeks now to Cheltenham. Are you looking forward to it, or what's your? And I know a few people are kind of saying maybe it's not the ex- normal excitement for a festival. How, how are you kind of feeling on the run up to it? Well, I, I always sort of put it down. This doesn't affect you, Emma, but it, I always put it down to age that one doesn't quite look forward to it in the way they used to. A lot of that is because there's quite a lot of work to do, both um, for betting expert and uh, IrishRacing.com, and obviously personal punting. Once it actually gets around to the day, I actually do enjoy it. But I must admit, the build-up, the one thing I can't stand, and we're probably going to do it now for 20 minutes, but is the sort of pontificating about where Willie and Gordon are going to run their horses. I mean, you might, it's just totally pointless. Nobody actually knows. And sort of these, uh, Twitter is full of people with suggestions, usually based on sort of financial involvement of where their 50 quid's gone in certain races as to what races they should run in. And it... I mean, I always talked to someone the other day about monopolies, and it, it is a bit of a monopoly now, or a duopoly maybe, where it's just Gordon and Willie's show, and they are driving the bus, and everyone else is sort of hanging on the back of it, waiting to see what happens. I, I don't think it's wonderful for punters, generally speaking. You know, I know, I know Vincent agrees with that. Um, I'm not sure it does much for your sort of recreational punter that, that you can't really have a bet in probably half the races yet because you're not sure what's going to run where. Yeah, I would agree on that um, for kind of recreational punters, I suppose. When I started maybe betting on Cheltenham first, like Willie would maybe have the favourites, but they were probably backable favourites because there was more in, in like to contest against him. And yeah, the one-up, I suppose, I kind of agree, a lot of work to be done between here and now, but when, when it comes around, it will be enjoyable. And I do think <laughs> the speculation on, on Twitter is so tedious about, you know, yeah. where's Willie going to run this novice hurdler? Every every second day, there seems to be like a half a line of a quote and people are taking it as, oh, he's going to go to the Ballymore, he's going to go to the Supreme. There's absolutely no point in doing it. We, we'll try not to do it, I suppose. We're going to have an anti-post chat. Yeah. We'll, we'll try and steer away from that as much as possible because, yeah, yeah it is. it does get um, pretty sickening, uh, especially at this stage when it's been going on for so long. But yeah. I, I suppose I big Shelton... news during the week as well. Sorry. So, and when Shelton comes round, um, the graded races often are not the betting races. You open them, you open the paper, there's sort of 19 runners in some of these novice hurdles, all different form lines from Britain and Ireland, maybe uh, mainly Ireland because the, the form's two stone better in Ireland. But um, the handicaps often are a, a better betting medium, I think, especially when you get extra places with some of the firms, five, six places. You know, mathematically, they're, they're the races to concentrate on as a punter, playing into these sort of cloak and dagger novice hurdles where you're not sure the intentions, you know, over the last six months of some of the, the connections. Uh, I'm not sure it's wonderful for punters. But anyway, I, it, it, I think it's an age thing, actually. I used to love Chum. I still love it. I, I think you're right, though. This year, it feels like, I don't know, we've got Constitution Hill, who looks like he's probably already won. Um, there's not that many sort of superstars emerging. I don't know. It, it feels like it, it's not quite got the sort of build-up that it normally has. Yeah, I suppose we're going to talk about this later, but just to touch on it now, we were kind of going to look at the maybe the four or four or five big favourites for the Tuesday. And I remember years ago, I mean, like there were so many superstars in that kind of four or five, like you'd have Duvan, Any Power. Any Power, with the time Any Power fell, that was the big one. I think it was Duvan, Vartour, was it Undeso and Any Power? That's it, yeah. It doesn't yeah. really seem like there's that kind of a, a level of, you know, I mean, there's good yeah. horses obviously running on the Tuesday, but... Yeah, well, it, it used to be, level, it's always been. I mean, the best thing about jumps racing, I love much prefer jumps to the flat. And it used to be horses used to come back, and you'd know them, and you'd know their traits, and which way they jump, and how they're seen to best effect. Of you know, Altior, Sprinter, Sacra, Dem, and Cato. 
It doesn't feel like that this year. I think Henderson soured off the public a bit with Constitution Hill, mm -hmm. with all the messing around. We've hardly seen him. I think we've seen him once, suddenly at Kempton um, this season. So it doesn't feel like he's a public horse. He's been wrapped up in cotton wool, and it doesn't help. I mean, it, and, and also, the race is going to be a three or four runner race with um, State Man and Constitution Hill. So that doesn't really trigger the betting public's imagination, especially it's going to be tactical, isn't it? It's going to be Paul Townend against Nico de Boinville and probably Nico will probably manage to win, I would imagine. Yeah, I agree. Um, the Constitution Hill thing is getting really tedious for me. I'd, I'd actually love to see him getting beat at Cheltenham, which might be a controversial opinion, but yeah. I get no enjoyment. No matter how good he is, I get no enjoyment of seeing him once or twice or three times a year. It just doesn't do anything for me, but right. we, we'll try see if that's maybe chat for later on in the show. We'll, we'll, we'll drive into this weekend's action first. And I think kind of big news during the week was the Grand National Weights and a big race on Sunday, a Saturday in Fairy House, sorry. The Bobby Joe Chase, which is kind of typically... A great trial for the Grand National from the this side of the Irish Sea. And there's four in the field this year, all of them holding a Grand National entry. I suppose I am Maximus is a good starting point for this. He give, he's given the weight away, but he has a great he has a great um record at Fairy House. He's won on his last two starts here, including the Irish National. I think Vanillier was kind of a big eye catcher though at the at the national weights for a lot of people. He's been giving a really attractive um really attractive racing weight by the English handicapper he's here you can see a 10 stone eight um which is only two pounds higher than he's good second in it last year I suppose I suppose looking at the Grand National first was there anything that really caught your eye um during the week when the weights were announced well I, I think the one I mean there's been money for those two horses and I am Maximus in the Grand National was 40 is now 20 and Vanillier well, I think was 106 uh, it was 16 to one and is now nine and obviously Gavin Cromwell's one of the shrewdest operators there is. I should think they were sort of punching the air when they saw the weight he's got. Um, the one I actually like, sort of one slightly from left field, um, is Kitty's Light, um, who has not really featured this season, like nearly all of Christian Williams' horses, has been badly out of form. I think Christian's actually had um, 10 winners in 15 months. He has had a couple in the last few weeks. I mean, at, at the time we were, we were recording this yesterday, he had three horses who are all quite... Well, fancied they all got beaten a very long way or pulled up. So maybe the revival hasn't started yet. But usually at this sort of time of year, February, March, he really kicks into gear. And Kitty's Light is another one of those sort of horses. Had a prolific time of things, a real thorough stayer, a sound jumper now, um, who will definitely stay this trip, uh, which is a big plus, and has plummeted down the weights and has been given a real chance in the Grand National and... I think Christian's probably the best target trainer there is. And this has been the target for about 18 months. So that, I think Kitty's life, you can have a bet. Um, it's definitely going to run barring accidents. I, I think Christian said he might run a, him in the um, in the Ultima at Cheltenham first, or maybe they'll go straight to Aintree. I mean, I'd half want them to go straight to Aintree to be fresh, to be honest, rather than just have that probably a hard race at Cheltenham then on to Aintree. But yeah, very well handicapped, definitely stay and maybe the yard starting to come back into a bit of form. That would be an interesting one, of course. Scottish national winner and Whippet winner last year as well, I think. But I suppose coming back to the Bobby Joe, um, is there anything here that kind of sticks out to you on the prices? I suppose for me, Vanillier probably, look, he's not a very attractive price. You couldn't say that. But he's kind of well in on the weight, I suppose. He's rated, I think, £7 in fear to IM Maximus. He's getting £12. On that logic alone, I suppose he has to have a good chance in this. Um, but IM Maximus is a very classy horse. I suppose had a hard time against Gallup and Deschamps last yeah. twice. Um, is there anything here, maybe a betting proposition for you? I, I won't be having a bet. I think these small field races in Ireland are, are minefields unless you can see the late market and, and how the horses are going to be ridden on the day. I mean, I, I don't think Iron Max has had any chance at all last time out behind Gallup and Deschamps. Mm. And I think he was ridden accordingly. He jumped out to his left, which is not the first time he's done that. And he never landed a blow and never got warm, which is probably what you'd expect, to be honest. I, I think... Uh, the market will guide pretty accurately. They're, they're, it's a good race to watch because, uh, you know, with an eye on the Grand National, it'll, it'll be informative. But I'd have thought the late market might tell you what's expected of the top one here. Yeah, you'd imagine so. And it definitely will be a point or towards the National. Vanilla was second in this last year as well, I think, before that. Good second in last year's National. But yeah, maybe a watching brief more so than a betting one. But we'll go on to Newcastle there for the big handicap chase there, the Eder. Um, 208, it's, this is going to be a bit of a war of attrition. Four miles one. Um, it's going to take a tough horse to win this and what looks like it's going to be pretty heavy ground. Was there anything sticking out to you in this? 
Well, I think it's a difficult race. I mean, if you're going to play, play each way and, and look for extra places. Um, there's lots of horses who've gone miles up the weight. Anglers Crag, who is the favourite, has been winning easily, but under different circumstances over shorter trips in smaller fields in generally weaker races and has shot up the weights as a result. He's only seven to two. I think that's a very short price. As, as you say, Emmett, this will be last person standing, that they're going to be absolutely unconscious up the straight here. I think they have had all the weather up north. Um, I like Christopher Wood here, um, who's about 14 to 1. He'd never tried um, marathon trips until they sent him up to Musselburgh the other day. He got beaten a very long way. I think he'll be about 20 lengths in third. But if you watch that run back, he, he did cross the line sort of running on again, which was pretty amazing for us. I think it was his first time beyond three miles. And He's not had that many chances over fences. I think he's had six career starts. Um, Venetia, I don't think she's flying by any means, but they had gone completely missing. And she's had a winner and a few run well in the frame this week. So you, usually with her horses, as you know, um, when the ground goes, her horses come back to form it, when it gets testing. And and Christopher Wood, um, Deutsch is back on replacing McMenamin. I thought there were lots of positives. He's less exposed than most of these. He hasn't shot up the weights. He's not had many runs this season. And judged on Musselburgh, I think he'll definitely stay. A nice one there. Each each way of price is twelve to one. Um, looks like kind of the right angle to go with this. It's I yeah, it's kind of hard to be back in a horse like Anglers Craig. I suppose at around three to one, seven to two. One that kind right. of stuck out for me was Galloping Bear, um, who was second in this last year off the same mark. I think um, Jockey Booking is a big plus. I'm a real fan of Joe Anderson. I think he's really, really strong for a five pound claimer. Um, it's nearly a free, yeah. free five pounds. Like he, he had a Definitely. very good, um, very good ride in a handicap hurdle last last week in. Um, oh God, I can't even, can't even remember where it was. But he dropped his whip. He just looks really, really strong rider. And I think yeah. this kind of test just really suits the galloping bear. He's a real tough kind of hardy horse. He was second to Kitty's Light last year, of course, off the same mark. Um, I suppose a form this year probably wouldn't fill you with confidence totally, like, but. Maybe he's just coming right for for this one today, and he's maybe the type of horse that could run very well at you know nine to one's probably a bit of an each way price as well. So he's kind of one that stuck out for me. Joe Anderson was that boy who um, at Plumpton. Did you see him at Plumpton when he came? He virtually it was yeah, a sort yeah. of rodeo act. He was sort of thrown out. It had to be on the floor, and he got back in it, and he somehow won. And since then, he started to pick up a few rides, as you say. Um, that five pound claim won't last too long, I shouldn't think. No, he he looks like one that really catches the IRA Sam, one of those good claimers over in the UK. But we'll go on to Kempton there, which is kind of the biggest meeting of the day on Saturday. And I think the first race we'll probably talk about is the 150, the Adonis Juvenile Hurdle. Interesting little contest. Paul Nichols has the favourite here in Cave du Burley. Um, he's won it the past three. No, sorry, so he has won it. Oh, sorry, he's won it the past with Zarkander and a few other horses like Solo as well. Um, Cave du Burley is kind of one. He's kind of talked about him as maybe like being a Gold Cup horse down the line. Um, he, he was impressive on first start for Paul Nichols, winner winner over hurdles in France as well. He looks short enough here though. Um, would you be with him or looking to take him on? I think I'd probably lean against him, to be honest. I mean, Paul Nick has got 13 horses declared. I think he's pulled a couple of them out. Um, we were talking off air about the going at Kempton. It never usually gets bad at Kempton, but earlier in the week, it was soft, heavy in places. Um, dry today, dry on Saturday, it looks like now. I think it'll just be on the softer side. It won't be too bad at all. Um, this one, Cape de Bonnet, big reputation from France. Supposed to be Nichols's triumph hurdle horse uh, when he came over. Um, I don't think it was that easy to get right, but there was money for him and he won easily enough um, or over course and distance on his UK debut. Um, the form, well, the second roaring legend has come out and got chinned at seven to two on in the week and well beaten as well. So that form has taken a big knock. Um, mm -hmm. I like give me five here because I think he'll probably front run. Um, he handles soft ground. There's more to come from him as his jumping sharpens up. And he was really impressive at Warwick. Now. He won by 18 lengths at Warwick. The, the, the form again, both the second and third have been beaten in the week since as well. So, But he routed the field at Warwick, so I don't think you can hold that against him. I thought he's three to one. And the top one, who's got a penalty for winning that race in France, by the way, I think he has to give away five pounds to give me five, which is quite a lot with these sort of horses, with, with these juveniles. Um, I thought give me five, who's three to one, was better value than Cave de Berlo's about evens. 
He was really impressive winning in Warwick that time. He's, of course, got the got the high-profile owners as well, isn't it? Brooks Kepa and Gray McPherson are involved in that syndicate, I think, for Harry Durham. Yeah. So that that's would be right, an interesting yeah. one. Graham McDowell. Nice that's, yes, it's all the golfers. Yeah, there's somebody... No, Graham McDowell is there, yeah. yeah. There's a few of them in that. I think uh, there'll be money for him. I think they like to have a bet these golf money. They can afford to, can't they? To be fair, um, but yeah, it would be, uh, yeah, it would be a nice one to see them getting the winner. If he could get um, a winner in Cheltenham for them, could be bring a little bit more spotlight to the sport from people who might definitely. not be watching before as well, which would be good. Yeah, but definitely. I think an interesting one in here, peaking up for for Gary Moore. I think Gary Moore has been third in this race for the last three years. Look, I suppose he was such a good horse, and the flat that you kind of have to think there would be more improvement to come from his hurdling debut. I think he raised 105 at his best on the flat. He was fourth in Irish Derby last year, of course. Um, but I suppose, look, last time he, he got off the mark over hurdles first time. He, he looked very keen that day and he was getting an awful lot of weight from the second horse. But he did see, did actually stretch out well enough in the end. And if you, if you can improve from that, just the ability he has shown on the flat, you'd imagine he, he should be a decent enough kind of hurdler. And a track like Kempton would probably suit him as well the speedier kind of flat type. So I wouldn't be ruling him out of it at all. And seven to one doesn't look like a bad price about him, although he will have to improve on that last one, I'd have to say as well. But definitely we'll I, totally agree. Forward. I totally agree. With the, the, also the form of the front two, we just touched on it, has taken knocks. Uh, and this mm. one was one of those horses of Gary's. He looked like being about five to two on at Sandown for his herding debut. He ended up mm. about seven or four against, which is very unusual for them. But he won easily enough, I thought. I, I don't think he'd been showing them a lot at home which would, be a, would have been a worry perhaps beforehand. But uh, he was very impressive at Sand and, and a track that horses don't look impressive at on soft ground. And one other thing quickly, Gary Moore's had nine winners in the last 14 days. Mm. He's absolutely flying. So I can totally hear you there. That, that's a good shout. Yeah, I, do, I just think, you know, being a 105 rated horse in the flat, he has to have more to come. And I'd say he probably drifted last time because he was so keen going down to post. If he settles a bit better now, I'd, I'd have to give him a big shout. And this is probably not like the strongest looking grade two hurdle, although, you know, there is a few with big reputations. Um, I, I, I just think there has, there has to be more to come from a horse like him. But look to the 227 then, the Pendle, a race that Paul Nichols kind of likes to farm. I think he's won it 13 times. Um in his career he's won the last three three years in a row i was kind of surprised tamora Tem hasn't opened up his favorite here nikki henderson actually has the mayor down the bottom and i think she, oh no sorry she, yeah she is slight or looking for prices here but yeah it's it's a, it's a close enough market between them um Le Petron was a grade one winner earlier in the season disappointed last time it's an open off looking contest i suppose um i'm kind of hard, funny and hard to oppose the paul nichols and harry cobden in combination here though who are you with in this one yeah, this is this is trappy, but I like blow your wad here of uh, Tom Lacey, another really good yard. It's got Kempton form. He was really impressive over this course and distance one start back, um, bolting up under a patient ride. And I think he's got a really good makeup here. The top one, Lipatron, will front run. Pembroke can front run. Sol Icon has front run, and so's Arclight. So they're going to go a proper gallop. Uh, and I think it'll be set up for Blow Your Wood to swoop late. I think the top one's got a lot to do. I think he might have done his winning, and I think he's a sandown horse, and he's not going to get an easy lead here. The bottom one's been winning on better ground. Um, a very, very good jumper, Arc Light, but they've been in weaker races on better ground. So I, I think it's my two are here, a Blow Your Wood, who I really do like a lot, and Tar Muras, if you've mentioned. Uh, Tar Muras, um, I think, traded at 6-1 to one on him running last time at Exeter, and I think Cobden made the only mistake he's made in his whole life to get beat. I mean, he's absolutely brilliant jockey, but I think he should have come over to the rail on Tar Morris. It probably cost him the race that day, but he's a, he's a sound jumper who doesn't have to lead. He'll be probably ridden with patience, so they'd be my two. But I think Blow Your Wood's one of the better bets of the weekend, actually. Interesting one there, Blow Your Wad and Tamworth. They actually have quite a form, I think. Was Tamworth come out on top at um, in the Tallworth when they met there as juvenile hurdlers? But they're pretty closely matched. Um, I, I'm just kind of with Tamworth, like you were saying there. He kind of threw the race away there in Exeter, kind of hanging badly in the closing stages. I think he could probably make up for it here. I'd say Kempton would probably suit him a whole lot better, kind of a speed track. Kind of looks like a speed yeah. horse. And yeah, ha pa Paul Nichols and Harry Cobden, they're very hard to oppose at the moment. Um. I think he, he can go out in front, he can hold him up, whatever he wants to do. I think, yeah, Tim Morris, he'd be probably one of my stronger fancies of the weekend. Um, 
But we'll have looked at three o'clock then, which is a novice hurdle, grade two novice hurdle. Look, probably not the strongest grade two kind of to look at, but it might give pointers towards the towards the uh, sorry the supreme novice hurdle because three of the horses who have been behind the highly touted Jericho de Rappany show up here. Lumpsome and fiercely proud but were behind him last time in Doncaster, and Secret Squirrel was behind him in Newbury back in December. Um, Lumpsome opened up as favourite here. I, to be honest, I don't really have a strong fancy in this. Um, did you have any strong opinion on it? I, I quite like Secret Squirrel because I think he's got a bit of speed and he's a Kempton horse. I think he's, mm. I'll ch choose my words carefully, I think he's a tricky character off the bridle. I backed him the other day. It was a match at Taunton. It's good form. I think it was a horse called Fire. Sorry, I must remember to get the name right. Though. It's, it's a horse of Paul Nichols called Fire, Fire Flyer. Flyer that's it. Who is very smart. Um, and I think it's going to be maybe in win a big handicap this spring with that but um no uh, secret school should have won at taunton uh, uh i don't think it was david bass's finest hour he, he looked like he had the race won and all of a sudden it was panic stations and cobb them mugged him on the other one um i, I don't think secret schools needs to be in front for very long but this could set up quite nicely i must admit i'm surprised that i like lump sum he's going to be a lovely three mile chase up but that form at donny they walk round jericho won it uh, I'm not sure that's a reliable guide to the merits of all of them. I certainly don't think that one of them should be seven to four and secret score should be six to one. Um, it's a competitive race. I, I think this track will be sharp enough for the other one with that form line. Fiercely proud who comes from a yard that's flying. I think he probably wants a longer trip and more of a galloping track personally. He's a very much a stayer, uh, whereas secret score has got a bit of speed. So maybe... A nice drying day on Saturday. Maybe it'll be edging towards good to soft rather than soft heavy in places. And that would suit Secret Squirrel, I think. Yeah, I, I'd agree. It is kind of hard to see why he is six to one, given, I mean, just going on a line of form through Jericho de Rappany, there isn't a whole pile between the two horses. Um, Just kind of a quick word on Jericho de Rappany then. He kind of was getting slated maybe a little bit for his last one, you know, getting taken off the bridle by a horse like Lumpsome. Would you give him any kind of chance in a Supreme Hurdle? Yeah, I... I, I sort of disagree in a way i mean that race first of all doncaster uh politely the ground at doncaster has been appalling for about the last three years almost every every single race they finish unconscious hurdles and chases i think it got ruined about five years ago with overwatering and they crawl home every single race. and they also walked around in that race at doncaster it was a mess and jericho didn't pick up straight away uh, it, it was a workmanlike performance, but in the last sort of twenty yards, when I, I wouldn't mark him, I was amazed that he trebled in price. To be honest, obviously, you know, maybe you'd like to have seen him win easily. He was a very short price, but I think there were mitigating circumstances. I, I think the drift was probably an overreaction. To be honest. Yeah, I'd kind of be with you there. I mean, I wasn't really overly strong on him before the race, but I do think it was a bit of an overreaction to the performance, especially when Henderson seems to hold him in that kind of regret. It's kind of hard to 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 see why he has drifted out so much. Mm. But we'll have a look at the the last race in Kempton, then we'll talk about the 337 Coral Trophy Handicap Chase. Um, it's a nice little handicap here to get stuck in for punters. I think one that was sticking out for me was Il Rodoto for the Nichols and Cobden partnership. Again, I'm kind of <laughs> finding it hard to stray, stray away from them this weekend. But I think he's got a great chance jumping up to the three miles for the first time over fences. Um, was there anything in here that was sticking out for you? I don't fancy Il Rodoto, so we'll disagree for the first time. Mm. I think it's all <laughs> formed the other way around. And I don't think he wants a right-handed track, but I could be wrong. I don't think he'll stay either. So. I'm probably going to lay him a place. Um, I don't fancy the top one at all. Uh, Sam Brown, he's still in the race, mind you. He's a big price. Um, I've got this down to two, Emma. The one who's really interesting okay. is the one who's out the weights at the bottom, Captain Nord, Christian Williams, owned by a pal, Ian Marmion, among others. Um, Captain Nord has been disappointing, and he's getting on a bit like us all, but he's got no weight at all here. If you, if you just, um, and you could probably do this using irishracing.com, look at all his Kempton form. All of his career efforts at Kempton, he's won this race, he's run a blinder in this race from higher marks. He is a Kempton horse, and Christian's coming right, hopefully, touch wood at this time of year. Uh, the boy riding at Tristan Durrell is absolutely brilliant. He rides for Skelton mainly. He's on board this one. So Captain Ord is running absolutely loose with no weight at all. I can see him running a big race. It'll be a strongly run race, which is what he wants. He's a sound jumper. He's a Kempton horse. He hasn't shown a lot this season, but... 
I think his last run was in a race um, that we, I'm going to talk about in a sec. Annual Invictus won at Donny. And Annual Invictus blew the whole field apart. He went off about five furlong pace um, and looked sure to stop and somehow won. And they're all sort of tailed off out of their comfort zone from an early stage. So I think that's a line through run. So that's my first thought. I think Captain was about 14 to one, something like that. And the other one is Forward Plan, who comes to me yard. I really like uh, Anthony Honeyball. He finished second to Annual Invictus. He's just basically progressive and improving, and he's going to get a patient ride from a good claimer as well, Ben Godfrey. Uh, and I think he'll go really close with a clean round of jumping. An interesting one. Uh, Captain Orr was the one that actually caught my eye first. So I think I actually backed him in this race last year and uh, he disappointed slightly, but he did win this two years ago and he's down to an attractive mark there, I think around one, two, six. So yeah, he has to have a big shout there at each way prices. But yeah, the Anthony Hollyball team and Ben Godfrey, another really good claimer as well. So some nice each way chances there. Ilvedoto, look, maybe, maybe you are right and maybe I'm wrong. I just think stepping up to three miles in Kempton probably not the worst place to do it it wouldn't be the stiffest three miles and if he's going to stay it might be here um he's been pretty consistent and big handicaps all the way through the season so I might take a small chance on him each way that's all we'll talk about in Kempton I'll just kind of quick mention to Nice um just a few kind of interesting ones here I suppose the ju- grade three juvenile hurdle we were hoping to see like in the morning declared wasn't declared but we do is one to maybe ha- keep an eye on she'll probably be a, a short price favorite for this but I'd say if she wins this and heads to Cheltenham she might be the first horse to ever go to Cheltenham after six winning runs in the same season it would be some achievement if she could do it she's around seven or eight to one for that um Boodles hurdle as well imagine that would be the most obvious target for her um if with a good run on Sunday as well and one more to mention then is just Fernie Hollow who shows up in the Newlands chase um I think it's a 600, 791 day absence he has to overcome. Just a word on Fernie Harlow, Stephen. Um, do you think it's likely he's going to show the same ability after such a long break? He's nine year old now, very good on, on his day, but um, it's kind of kind of hard to see it's horses a, coming back to that same to that same fettle, isn't it? It's a, it's a long time off. I'm, I'm not usually worried about huge breaks, especially with Willie Mullins, but I do think the fact he's nine now. You know, it suggests there must have been something pretty majorly wrong. I, the market will tell you what's expected first. I mean, it really was a high-class performer, wasn't he? I think he was one of those horses that everyone thought was going to be a, a sort of grade one winner, definitely probably over fences and one to follow. But obviously, things have gone seriously wrong. I don't actually know what's been wrong with Fernie Holly. Perhaps do you know what's, what the actual reason was? I, I'm not sure. I think it was kind of a series of, of unfortunate events, which I might say was one thing after the other. Yeah, it's so long since we've seen him. But very good in his day, obviously. It'll be kind of fascinating to see what kind of price he is open up at here. Like on his best, like getting weighed from the legs of Ashtree Meadow, you'd imagine he'd be long odds on. But mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure people would be too keen to back a horse like him after such a long break, Um, considering all the problems he's had. But be an interesting one to watch and see he does have an entry for that champion chase at the festival as well so maybe he might announce himself as a jack horse to that but um be good to see him back on the track anyway at very least but kind of to wrap up on the weekend stuff we might get our best bets for the weekend so you might give me your nap your next best and maybe an each way shout as well for the weekend yeah i think uh, my nap for betting expert i think is give me five in the adonis at 150 at um kempton um, my sort of next best was blow your wad in the 227, Tom Lacey's chaser. And then, well, I, I might have four, actually, just to be really irritating. There's a horse running at Hereford on Sunday um, in the 240. First time out over hurdles, Kel Dulage. I don't think he's going to be any kind of price, but he won a Cheltenham bumper the other day for Jane Williams. And Jane Williams wouldn't really be known for bumper winners. And he looked an absolute monster there on heavy ground. And he makes his hurdling debut at Hereford. I think he's a really interesting horse to watch. Um, and a big priced one. Um, let's go for Christopher Wood then in the Ida, who's about 14 to 1. Very good. Um, my one's just quickly. I think my nap, I'm going to put Tamuras for my next best. It's one we actually haven't mentioned. It's Glenn Killen in the Tommy Carberry handicap hurdle on Saturday in Fairy House. I was just very impressed with his win last time, stepping into handicap company for the first time he's got a good claim on board as well Kyle Miller so I think he should run a big race and my each way shout I'm gonna go for the galloping bear in that big um either handicap chase but to finish up the show then we said we'd have a quick anti-post chat and the anti-post chat will be Tuesday's favorites hit or miss um it's not always nice to have a little accumulator going on the Tuesday lucky 15 or something like that 
with some of the favourites, um, which often can be quite hot favourites, and it's looking kind of similar this year. I suppose to start with the Supreme, Ballyburn is the current market leader. We said we're not going to speculate too much on where they might run, but if Ballyburn shows up in a Supreme, is he a banker for you, Stephen? I think he's a far too short price if he goes there. I thought Mystical Power was the one there, but the thing with Ballyburn, he's done nothing wrong. He could be absolutely superstar, but Mystical Power has done things right wrong. I don't think he's jumped that brilliantly, um, but he's got a really good turn of foot, Mystical Power, if it is good to soft ground. I mean, I think the thing with Ballyburn is, A, he had the, very impressive, but had the absolute run of it the other day at the Dublin Race Festival. He's really impressive, but they let him lead on his own. Well, that will not be happening in a Suprema unless it cuts up really badly. So it'll be different circumstances. And they've already tried him over two and a half, I think, which, you know, I think that says they think probably he's more of a three-mile chaser than a sort of Supra. So I don't, It's just prices, isn't it? I hope when well, he runs them both, I'll be with Mystical Power if he does. I would probably be with you there. I think Mystical Power has that turn of foot that maybe Ballyburn looks probably more like a stare. Um, yeah, Mystical Power, I think, at the prices looks more attractive at the moment. So I won't be putting Ballyburn into my banker's list at the moment. Arkel then, uh, I think Marine National is still around 9-4, to four, which was kind of surprising to me. Um, is he hit or miss for you as a favourite? Well, I'm sort of a bit of a contrarian with Marine National. I think he's a much more appealing proposition now, but I suspect he'll get bigger because people are going to watch his latest run. There's 4,000 preview evenings to mull over these horses. I, I thought he got a pretty ordinary ride last time out. They didn't. There was a lot of front runners, so they had to try and teach him something and ride him from off the pace. He got stuck up the inside, and he kept getting half length, losing half a length. Half, and then he ended up on the wrong part of the track, I think. I, he ran badly, and then he weakened. It was a disappointing run. There's no doubt about that. But I would be inclined to forgive it. He, he created such an impression first time out with his jumping. He jumped like Arkel, I thought. I'd give him another chance, but I don't think you need to give him another chance yet. These prices are, are illiquid and untested. When we get on the day of Cheltenham, you'll see the real prices. This could be a really open race on the day. I wouldn't be surprised if Marine National ended up being like four to one, and then he probably would be a bet. Um, I don't think you can say he's a banker, but I suspect he's going to end up being a bigger price than he should be. Yeah, you can imagine him drifting out as well, especially when he's maybe not being trained by Willie Mullins. You can see, like, from a smaller issue mm, yard, yeah. um, the confidence in the market might not be there. So if he was around four to one, maybe you might be tempted, but I would have my reservations on him for sure, especially with uh, a sp suspected breeding issue um, wouldn't be ideal, especially if the ground wants to come up soft. So I'd be giving Marine National a miss myself. Ch Champion hurdle, I suppose, quick one, Constitution Hill. Fighting talk from Nicky Henderson this week uh, about State Man. Can you see him? Any chance of him getting beaten? Well, I, I sort of I had a long discussion about this. About a month ago, the move was to bet State Man each way at four to one because you're getting four to five a place, three places. There might only be four runners. Well, he'd need, you'd need to shoot him to get him out of three or he'd have to fall or something to go disastrously wrong. So, you know, you, you're getting five to four on about something's about 25 to one on. So that was the move then. The price has shortened up a bit and you can't get on each way anymore, I don't think. But um, I think Constitution will win. I think one thing tactically, if Stateman had got a soft lead and it's Paul, Nate, uh, Paul Townend against Nico de Boinville, I want to be on Paul Townend. He'll get the fractions mm. right. He'll quicken at the right time. I, I wouldn't want to be betting my life savings at four on on Nico de Boinville against Paul Townend. But anyway... That's another story. What's happened now is Huey Morrison has said that Not So Sleepy is going to run. Now, Not So Sleepy, generally speaking, is a 20 lengths clear lunatic front runner. That that will not help State Man if that's the case. If that's how that's going to be run, it changes the tactics of what tempo he can set on his own and all the rest of it. So uh, I think the favourite will probably win. It's a watching race. As you say, I think Hendo's lost the public a bit with this horse, which is a shame. Next then is the Mayor's Hurdle. Um, Lassie Mouse, brilliant in the Unibet Hurdle at Cheltenham last time. Hammering what looks like one of her bigger rivals for the Mayor's Hurdle in Love, Love Envoy. Looking like now her biggest changer probably comes from the same stable in the shape of Astro Diamond. Do you think she is a banker? I suppose a step up and trip is the only question for her. Yeah, the, the trip's a slight concern, isn't it? She's quite a free going man. Um, that really was an impressive performance uh, at Cheltenham first time. She was quite easy to back. I think there was six to four on about about, and she won like a sort of ten on chance. She won like you know one of those sort of midweek races in Ireland where she just cruised through on the bridle. She was very impressive. I, I think she'll be very hard to beat. I suspect she probably is one of the bankers of the week, to be honest. 
Yeah, banker for me too. And last one on the list, um, Embassy Gardens for the National Hunt Chase. This was one of the more open renewals on the Tuesday in terms of the graded contests. Gone from strength to strength this year, in fairness, since the switch over fences. Um, typical type for the National Hunt Chase. Do you think he is, look, he's around three to one now, probably short enough for a race like that. But would he be on your bankers list for Tuesday? Well, I, I, I think he is a short price. I mean, stamina would have to be a big question. Mike's never been beyond three mile one before. It's all small fields um, in Ireland. He's won two from two over fences, eight to 11 and eight to 13. I mean, I think on form, it, this looks like it could be quite a competitive race. I, I think I'd have to go miss with Embassy Gardens. Yeah, I'd be with you there. There's plenty of good horses there to take him on with Corbett's Cross, Flooring Porter, Nick Rocket. Um, at the prices, he looks just a little bit too short for me. But yeah. thanks very much, Stephen, for coming on. I probably kept you a little bit too long on this one, but some great insight there into the weekend's racing, some nice each way prices to take a look at as well. Um, if you're looking to have a bet this weekend, make sure to gamble responsibly, and we'll be back on Monday with our normal review show. Yeah.